Forget Shadow Rider and Ice Rider Calyrex, I think the Galarian Birds might just be the most influential cards from Chilling Rain. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sableyes, I'm Mitch, and today, yeah, I know, I've said something very controversial there, but I think that Moltres and Zapdos particularly are going to influence the metagame quite a lot over the coming weeks, and we have a deck for you today that utilizes both of them. Thank you very much to everyone who met those like goals last week. Again, if we can hit 500 likes on this video, then we will put out another video tomorrow, and I can tell you right now, it's one that you don't want to miss. If you haven't subscribed as well, we're getting closer to that 15,000 mark that I'm going to be aiming for. I want to get there before the new set comes out. So if you can get that 15,000 subscriber mark, that would be just beautiful. I love it. Thank you very much, everyone, by the way. Let's take a look at our deck list. So here is the deck that we're going to be looking at today, and haha, <laughs> Trick Jets, an ADP deck, that's so funny. Uh, this one is running rampant in online tournaments at the moment, and you'll soon understand why. It is very, very strong. Uh, this deck list is heavily influenced by the one used by Matt69019 in the recent uh, Australia TCG tournament. Can't remember exactly what his result was, but he did quite well, and it has a lot going for it. Obviously, ADP's Altered Creation attack is one that lots of people know about. Most people are going to have two copies of this card, considering it's free on the ladder, so definitely easy to get together at the moment. Uh, when you use that GX attack, we want to be attacking with one of a myriad of different attackers. We have the traditional Zacian, which can hit for weakness on Pokemon like Ice Rider, uh, Calyrex VMAX. We also have Galarian Zapdos V, which can hit for weakness on Eternatus VMAX. And we also have Galarian Moltres V, which hits for weakness on Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX. And if you're not sure, those three decks are probably the three best decks in the format at the moment. So we are going to be able to hit those decks for weakness. We're going to be able to take multiple prizes. And we have a game plan against pretty much every other deck in standard as well. You can see there's lots of answers in here for a whole bunch of different decks. But we can just run it as a straight ADP list if we want to. Obviously, Moltres has the Dire Flame Wings ability, which is allowing us to attach extra Dark Energy from the discard pile. You notice we have four of them in the deck. We can also use Aurora, Bo uh, sorry, not Aurora, Aura Burn for 190 damage to Dark and the Colorless Energy. We deal 30 damage to ourselves, but we deal 190 to our opponent. And if we've used ADP, P's GX attack, we're dealing 220, which is going to knock out pretty much every basic Pokemon V in the standard format at the moment, which is always really, really good. There's three prizes to get there. We have Thunderous Kick from Zapdos for one fighting and three colorless energy. We deal 170 damage, and that's not a great attack cost until you read the ability. We get to take off Cutlass attack cost for every Pokemon V that is in play. So if our opponent has three Pokemon V, then we get to attack for one energy, and we are dealing 200 damage after we use our opponents, uh, after we use our GX attack, which is incredibly good. I'm getting so excited, I'm getting lost in the cards. There's so many different options here. What we're going to do is we're going to take it out onto the ladder and play a couple of games. Hopefully, we come up against we come up against a couple of meta decks. I've got to take a glass of water or something. It's time to get going. We've got a Moltres start here, and straight away we are up against Eternatus V, uh, a very good deck, obviously, in this format, hitting things like Shadow Rider, Calyrex for weakness. It does have a solid matchup against ADP um, in the fact that it can knock out an Arceus and Dialga Palkia in one hit if everything goes well. So we do have to be careful of that and we are also going second. So it means that Eternatus can potentially get the jump on us. Um, we do have a counter though. We can use Galarian Zapdos, which is obviously a hard counter to Eternatus. We only have one of them, so we're going to need to find another knockout some other way. Uh, our preferred method will be to use our GX attack, then gust up a Crobat, and then use the Zapdos to knock out whatever we need to win the game. But sometimes it doesn't go that way, as uh, people who have played ADB before probably know. Uh, it doesn't always go the way you're expecting it to, so... We'll see. At the moment, our hand looks solid. We've got Viridian Forest, we've got Water Energy, we've got Quick Ball. Um, we've got pretty much all the pieces that we need to get close to a GX attack this turn. Um, my thought is that we're going to Viridian Forest, grab a Metal Energy, discard that with a Quick Ball, uh, grab ADP, get a Water Energy, attach to that ADP, and then move on from there. Um, but anything can happen. 
obviously anything can happen. I'm just going to move my uh, microphone just a little bit closer. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear me a little bit better now. Hello. The sultry dulcet tones of Mitch from the Stabilize. Putting it to sleep. Whatever I'm doing over here. It's our turn. Our opponent has got pretty much all that they need. Uh, and us top decking that escape rope is incredibly good. Uh, let's grab ourselves the ADP with the quick ball. We can play that down. We can play the Viridian Forest as well. I'll attach energy. I'm going to use the escape rope that we top decked to get my ADP into the active. Um, and now we are but one one card away, really. Two, three cards away from getting ourselves the GX attack. I suddenly, we suddenly have a lot more work to do. Let's grab a Crobat here if we can. It is in the deck, so we will use that. Crobat will be able to draw us six cards. And uh, let's find out, can we get what we need? This is very awkward here. We've got a Quick Ball that can grab the Zashin, which obviously we do want to use. Uh, but we didn't find either of uh, Metal Saucer or Energy Switch here. So that's a little bit awkward. We can use Die Flame Wings and then Research. If we don't get either of these pieces, I think we might just need to hold off here. We got Metal Saucer. I guess we go for it then. We're missing just one energy switch, so we'll Dedene. Um, I think actually we just switch into the Zashin here just in case just in case something silly happens. We Dedene. We are looking for energy switch. One of our three energy switch if we can. And we can't, so I think, um, what are we going to do here? We could retreat into the ADP, but then we could potentially lose it next turn. So what we might do, we might just retreat into, like, Dedene, because we don't really care if that gets knocked out. Um, I will then... Actually, I'm going to attach the air balloon. We're just going to put that there, and then we'll Intrepid Sword. We don't find anything off the next three cards, so a little bit unlucky there, but that's okay. We've, we've done pretty much all we needed to do. Um, we don't have anything too dangerous in the active, but then again, our opponent is going to be bossing us, which is unfortunate. Um, they're going for the Crobat. Alright, so, that suggests to me that our opponent doesn't have a great hand either. If they're bossing a Crobat out, they are not super confident of getting a knockout on the ADP. If they had everything that they needed, then they would obviously be gusting that ADP instead. Now, should I have placed the air balloon on the Dedene? Probably not, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It's happened now. It's always one of those ones where if you place it on the ADP, on the Dedene in the active, uh, they boss something else out and you get locked there. And if you don't place it, then uh, you get Marnied and you have no switch out. So, whatever we did, we were going to be punished for it. It's always the way. Uh, this hand is not good. This hand is not good. We have a Cherish Ball, so we can grab a Dedene or a Morwile if we want one. Maybe another ADP. If there is one in the deck. My gut feeling, though, is that we're just going to be using Professor's Research here. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Now, what I will say is that the Galarian Moltres in this deck actually does two things. So not only does it take knockouts on Shadow Rider Calyrex really easily, but it also gives you an attacker that can take a knockout on a two-prizer. Um, without you having to get the nuts or attack with your ADP. So, it is a very, very good card. Um, we're going to get rid of the Dark Energy and grab another one out of the disc, uh, out of the deck with the Viridian Forest. Then we'll Cherish Ball. There's Dedene and Morwile. No ADP, though. They've got one card in hand, so I'm not going to grab the Morwile. Uh, and then we will research. We want a Switch, please. And we found one. Excellent news. So, we can switch into our ADP. We can use Dire Flame Wings. Get ourselves a Moltres ready to attack. And uh, we can actually double Metal Saucer here. I don't think there's any reason not to. Uh, and then we get Altered Creation. And we are ready next turn to take a knockout. Now our opponent has one card in hand. Uh, chances are that it's a Research and a Crobat. So they'll draw five and then draw seven. That's often the way these things go. Um, either that or they'll discard a useless card with Viridian Forest. Get the energy, attach and then... Uh, go for broke from there. Looks like maybe we might be safe. No. Uh, they had an Eternatus VMAX and a Crobat. There you go. Fantastic. So, uh, if we had have gone for the more while, we had a 50-50 shot of getting that Crobat, but undoubtedly, my opponent would have top-decked that one anyway. So, we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, good things, though, for us. If our opponent doesn't knock our ADP out, then we can gust up the Crobat, use the Aurora Energy, and then Ultimate Ray. And that puts us in such a fantastic position because we'll have three powered attackers and almost 
and infinite ways to take the last three prizes that we need to win the game. If they do knock the ADP out, then we could potentially go looking for the Zapdos, although at the moment we don't have a lot of options. We are going to be gusting with our boss and attacking with either the Moltres or the Zacian. Uh, in saying all that, we are about to get Marnied, no doubt. I've spent all this time talking about how good the hand is. Well, not how good the hand is, but how we're going to use our hand. So, no doubt our opponent uses Marnie. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, I thought they was... They, they played down a Crobat, which didn't draw them cards. And I thought, oh, this guy's just made a mistake. No, he's benching a Pokemon and then marnie Great. Um, okay, so they are one Pokemon and a Switch away from being able to knock the ADP out. But, they've actually given us the Zapdos. So, we're, we're actually in a pretty solid position here. So, they don't have the knockout on the ADP. But, they... We don't have the switch either. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Okay, uh, just settle down. We attach the Aurora Energy to Zapdos. That is our attacker. We research here, I think. And if we get a switch or an energy switch... We have the potential to just win this game straight up now. So we've got double energy switches, which is fantastic. We're going to use that to move a dark energy onto the ADP. We will retreat into our Zapdos. And you can see just how good both of these birds are. We take the knockout on the Eternatus VMAX for four prizes. And that is all thanks to Moltres and Zapdos V. Both cards coming through clutch for us in this particular matchup. Whew! And we have a boss for next turn, so we can knock out pretty much anything. Um, we've got double energy switch, we've got switch, we've got metal source, we've got an attachment. I, I'm not going to talk about how good my hand is, because I don't... <laughs> so reliable, that doesn't matter, we've just won the game anyway. <laughs> Just marnied us into the game anyway. It's fine. We've been marnied into double boss, double Aurora energy. So nothing that our opponent can do here can stop us from winning this one. They can gust out the ADP and deck us out, I suppose. That is possible. But we have switches in there anyway. So it is over. If they take the knockout, we have the pick of knockouts on our opponent's bench. We can send up Zacian or our Moltres and take a knockout on any of their Pokemon with boss's orders. I'm going to go with the traditional Zacian. That way everyone gets their time in the sun. We gust up the Crobat and then Brave Blade for the victory. That Eternatus didn't stand a chance. We had everything that we needed in that game. I just, oh, it's just mm, so good. Such a good deck. Alrighty, we've had an average start, but our opponent has had an even more average start than we have. Uh, they've given us three mulligans and done nothing, so we could potentially win the game here, to be brutally honest. Um, but we're not going to. I have seen their hand. They are playing Decidueye. So, we have maybe two things that we realistically need to do in this game. Firstly, we need to make sure that we get our GX attack off ASAP. So I'm going to research here to try and get that to happen. Um, we don't, unfortunately, have access to anything like that just yet. So we're just going to Intrepid Sword. But next turn, as long as we get our GX attack off, we should be fine. We also need to make sure that that Echoing Horn that's in our hand, it's just over, it's just over here, here over there. When we have that Echoing Horn in our hand, we have a chance, because we can put down Pokemon from our opponent's discard pile to take knockouts. So, I don't even care that it's being discarded, uh, not discarded, mining away, that's fine. We should be fine. So we need to make sure that the Echoing Horn is used, because what the Decidueye decks like to do, is they like to get a bunch of benched Pokemon out, and then they set up as many Decidueyes as they can, and then they scoop up everything else. So if we can take a knockout with uh, our ADP before they get themselves set up properly, then maybe we have a cheeky knockout in the middle of the game where they either don't manage to scoop up everything or they uh, or they can't get a Decidueye out for a turn or whatever it is. And then as long as we have Echoing Horn, we should be able, we should be able to get ourselves into a position where we can take six prizes. Now, our opponent's going to Gormandize here, so we're in a pretty solid spot to use more while, I think. Top decking that research is very nice. Um, we are going to attach to the active. I'm going to play down the more while, because the more basics... Wow, they didn't have anything in there. 
that's unlucky. Uh, the more basics our opponent has, the better. We're going to research. We don't really need the cards that are currently in our hand. What we do need is we need some extra stuff, like a boss for next turn, extra energy, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to discard a dark energy. We're going to alter creation, and we are going to hope that our opponent doesn't, like, scoop up the Snorlax, evolve into the Sidewire, and just end it there. Uh, looks like they are going to continue playing, which is good news for us. They've got a Snorlax to knock out, they've got a Sobble to knock out, they've got a Rowlet to knock out. So that's three Pokemon. We've seen the Mew go into the discard pile as well. So we know that Echoing Horn is going to be useful, at least for two prizes. As long as we get that and Boss's Orders in the same hand at the same time. So now we should be okay. So our, the worst thing that could happen to us here is that our opponent scoops the Snorlax up, puts a Decidueye in the active, and then passes or attacks. Because uh, then we have to find a boss. If they leave the Snorlax in the active, the game is certainly on. We can definitely win it. So we will uh, we'll wait and see what our opponent does. It's a Gormandize. Okay, so this game is incredibly winnable. It's imminently winnable. We're going to attach. We're going to discard this metal energy. We're going to grab just another whatever energy. It doesn't really matter because we're about to discard it. I will use Metal Sorcerer and get a metal onto the Zashin and then research. We want to thin out cards that we're not going to use in this matchup. For instance, everything that is currently in our hand is useless but the boss. We're going to hold on to the boss. Um, let's use Ultimate Ray, grab some energies. We'll grab two metals and a water. Put the metal on the Zashin. We'll put a metal on the Zashin and the water on the Morwile. Uh, and take our first couple of prizes. Okay, so now we're in a weird spot. We've used more while, so we're relying on our opponent to whiff for one turn, if we can. If we can. Because if they put double Decidueye in play or use double Scoop Up Net, then the game becomes unwinnable for us, uh, which becomes bad. That's, that's bad for content. Um, so they've got an Evo Incense off of this Drizzile. No Scoop Up Net. If they Evo Incense into a second Decidueye, and then scoop up the Drizzile again, we are going to lose. Um, but this is the thing about this kind of deck, right, is that you can just tech in another card if you want to. You can tech in Aegislash, and you just automatically win, so... Whatever, you know. So yes, we are waiting. Can our opponent lock us out of winning this game? If they scoop up a basic Pokemon from their bench, then... Well, if they scoop up twice, then they win. If they play this Sobble down, that's bad. We will win. You know, Evo Incense. I'm just going to grab a sip of water. Well, my throat's a little bit sore. A little bit parched. Oh! oh lovely. Lovely stuff. Alright, they're level balling. So they're thinning out. My gut feeling is that they're about to research. I think they've got, like, double Drizzile and thingy, um, Sobble in their hand. Okay, so they're researching. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Scoop Up Net is bad. Okay. This game just got a little bit more difficult, but then they just played down another Sobble, so the game becomes a little bit more easy again. I mean, they, they use Splitting Arrow, so we would have been able to knock out the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Rowlet, which we're going to do now. Um, let's just have a think here. Let's bench, uh, that. We're going to do this. Sorry, I'm just trying to, just trying to use my brain, and it's very difficult for me. Tool Scrapper is a highlighted card, but it's my tool. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, and then we'll grab an energy out. We just want a thin. We don't want cards that are useless. We want good cards. We don't want bad cards in our hands. We're just going to throw all that stuff away. Echoing Horn. All right, so... We take a knockout. They have a bunch of basics. We don't want to play the Echoing Horn now, though, because we don't have boss. So let's Ultimate Ray. We'll knock out the Rowlet and take two prizes. We have nine cards in our deck, and we know that at least two of them are boss's orders. So we're in a good spot. We want to start thinning out our useless stuff. So that we can Echoing Horn a basic Pokemon and then Gust it. Because if our opponent is any good, they will scoop up this Drizzile right now. And if they don't scoop it up, then that's just silly. They're going to scoop it up. Okay. 
So now this game becomes, can we find Echoing Horn and Boss's Orders in the same hand before we either one deck out or two give up six prizes? We are unlikely to give up six prizes if our opponent keeps doing what they're doing because it will take way too long for them to take those six. Um, but unfortunately for us, we have not managed to find our boss. There are three in the deck. There are eight in eight cards in our deck, and there are three bosses. Okay, all right. Let's um, we're just gonna play a bunch of cards here. We're gonna uh, what we could do is we could energy switch. Actually, no. Let's let's use cherish, but we'll just thin that out. It's completely useless. We can energy switch. Oh, it's just kind of like we can energy switch from the Morwall to the Dene. I think that's fine. Let's do that. Then we just intrepid sword, right? We just grab three cards, three good cards, two bosses' orders from the dip, from the deck. There's two of them. Now this is actually really good for us because we know there is one boss left in the deck, right? There is a hundred percent guaranteed to be one bosses' orders left in that deck. So if we get Marnied, which we haven't been, we would have at least picked up a boss. But now our patience will be rewarded because we are going to throw down the Echoing Horn. Get something, a basic whatever. We actually top decked an escape rope, so let's use that. We can throw our Zashin forward and then Brave Blade for the knockout. And even decks like Decidui that are supposed to win against ADP cannot beat them if you get everything right. So you've seen the deck in action. It comes down to the grade. How good are Zapdos and Moltres in this deck? Well, honestly, playability-wise, this is an A. You can win against any top-tier deck at the moment if you get everything that you need. That is a problem the deck has, though. It is slightly less consistent than some other decks. Uh, it obviously has the same problems that a traditional ADP list would have, but you also have the added problems of having to get all of those different energies and attackers in at the right time. So I've dropped the consistency a little bit for that. Value-wise, I'll give this one a B as well. You can get ADP and Zashin relatively cheaply at the moment. Both have been free on the ladder, so you shouldn't get those, uh, they shouldn't be too expensive. Obviously these two cards, are quite tough at the moment to pick up, but they are in relatively uh, high supply. So you should be able to get them at some point or another. Maybe not in these two arts. Maybe maybe these two arts uh, might be beyond you for value, but that's okay. Fun-wise, I love a counter deck, and that's what this is. It counters pretty much everything that is in the meta at the moment. So if you're looking to just go onto the ladder and win some games, then this one will definitely do the job for you. Overall, it is an A- minus deck. If there wasn't that consistent problem, then I would give this one an A. It's just that little bit off being one of the best decks at the moment. But if I was to make my top five decks of uh, Chilling Rain, then I would replace that ADP deck with this one because it is incredibly good. And finally, a big thank you to all of my channel members, including all of the channel members that have jumped on board recently. We've got a bunch of new ones. You can see them all up here in this Mega Sableye section. But most importantly, thank you very much to my Ascended Sableye's dad bod, Azazel, and our brand new Ascended Sableye member, Wilds Depot. Thank you so much for your very generous support. Uh, thank you, as always, to my Royal Sableye's, Fernando Yolo, Stephen Tite, Agent Abel, Austin, Josiah, Leaf Devourer, Robsy, Brad Chings, Just, uh, Brad Chings, Brad, Justin, Krokotaku, and Drew. Appreciate your contributions, as well as all of the Mega Sableyes, including our four new Mega Sableye members, Yo-Yo Smuggler, Trainer Jack, Driving Dream, and Tam Clancy. Thank you very much. We are on 84 members at the moment. That means we are 16 away from 100, and I thought that a good way of celebrating 100 members would be to hold a members-only tournament. So if you are interested in that happening, we are 16 members away. It costs three bucks a month. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there's a link down in the description as well as a join button next to the subscribe button, which you should already have clicked. Subscribe, like the video, comment down below, do all that good stuff. Give me the engagement that I so desperately crave, and I will see you hopefully tomorrow after we meet that 500 like goal for more from the Sableyes. Bye.